Hello, I'm Dave Speakman. Today I'm going to be talking about how to improve audio quality using the conferencing app Zoom. Many people, including myself, have been delivering music lessons on Zoom. And there are a number of ways that you can improve the audio quality, both at the teacher's end and at the student's end. So this is for, for both ends, really. We're going to look at how to change your settings in Zoom. We're going to look at some equipment that you can get to improve your setup and a few little hacks and tricks and little ways that you can just improve things without spending any money whatsoever. If you're interested in what I'm doing, please do subscribe to the channel. Give the video a like. If you have any questions about anything, please do leave a comment below as well. Thanks. First of all, then we're going to look at the settings within Zoom itself. You can see next to this mute button, it's a little arrow. If we click this little arrow, and we go to the bottom of this list, we can go to audio settings. Now in the audio settings, we want to uncheck this box here, automatically adjust microphone volume. And then we're going into the advanced settings. We want to disable suppress persistent background noise. And we want to disable suppress intermittent background noise. That's actually listening for human voices and it's going to cancel out anything that isn't a human voice, which includes you playing your guitar or playing your piano or whatever it is that you're doing. So there are a few other ways that you can improve the audio by use of either an external USB audio interface rather than using the internal mic on your computer or by using a USB microphone. The way that I've got it set up here at the studio is um, understandably overly elaborate really for what's needed. I'm using the studio's Thunderbolt interface which is a Focusrite Claret 8 Pre X and that actually gives me 24 inputs. So I can actually take sound from any input anywhere throughout the whole studio <laughs> and it comes through onto the Zoom call which is pretty cool. I wasn't expecting it to do it, but it seems to just sum all the audio together and sends it all out. It also plays back anything that I'm playing through the computer. So if I hit something on my sampler over here, I can annoy my students with that sound. And I can also play back audio from apps like Spotify and things like that. There's a workaround to that though. In Zoom, when we press share screen, we can select this share computer sound. It will now, when you share, it will share the sound that's coming out of your computer. That's really useful if your audio interface isn't automatically sending the computer's audio out to the students. The great thing about having a multiple input sound card is that I can actually have my amp mic'd up in a different space. And then when I play, it comes through to the audio in Zoom, which is a real help. The microphone that I'm using is a Rode SmartLav, and this is the mic that I've been using for all my YouTube videos anyway. It's a relatively inexpensive lav mic, as lav mics go. So for comparison, this is just the audio straight into the microphone of my MacBook Pro. The way that I've been doing it at home is with this Rode NT3, relatively inexpensive, small diaphragm condenser mic. And what's really good about the lav mic is that it only picks my voice up. So actually when I'm doing the Zoom calls, I'm not bothering using headphones because my microphone's quite close to me and it's only picking me up. It's not really picking much of the speakers up. If you're having a problem with echo, then you're probably gonna to need to use headphones. Again, with the microphone like this, it has a relatively small pickup. This is actually hypercardioid, what they call hypercardioid, which means that it picks up quite narrowly in front of itself and a little bit behind. And then I've been hanging this above me on a microphone stand, so just above me like this, kind of pointing at my chest the same way as they would on a film set. There are various other options for this as well, various other small diaphragm condenser mics. Anything will do really. I've seen people using SM58s and SM57s. I think that that's a perfectly viable option. 
and, and, and a good option to use really. Using a multiple input sound card as well, you can pull, plug many different things in, but it's not necessarily the most straightforward way to do it. If you're not that into the technology and, and you don't have that much of an interest in recording, perhaps using a USB microphone would be the option. We're going to talk to a couple of my friends now about how they're approaching that. So yes, yeah, so we're going to talk to my friend Sai about his setup. So Sai, you've gone with a USB microphone, yeah? Yeah, it's just pretty much the cheapest one I could find. But it's a Behringer, Behringer C1U. Yeah, it's a great mic. I mean, it's basically the USB version of the C1, which is a very cheap, large diaphragm condenser microphone. But as, you know, as as with all Behringer products, far exceeds the the price point really. Yeah, I think it's I think it's better um, than the mic just on the side of a MacBook, um, and I don't have. A fancy sound card um, where I could plug it. Uh, I've got some microphones. I've got some quite good microphones. I've just got no way of getting them into the computer. No. So USB microphone was. Yeah, it's quite a simple, cheap solution and one that you can leave set up. Um, eventually, when we end up going back gigging again, you can just let the, leave this set up for your online lessons in the future. Yeah. So yeah. when you're playing your saxophone, then how are you? How are you achieving a similar level? Are you what are you doing? Are you turning away from the microphone? Yeah. So th this is probably about a foot away from my face yeah. talking, and then I do some piano teaching as well. So it's on a it's on a it's on a, an arm that will spin round, so I can sit at the, so I can sit at the piano and talk. At yeah. It. Yeah. Um, and then when I'm playing my sax, I just need to be a little bit conscious that if I play it um, here, it's probably gonna take your face off a little bit um, yeah so i just need to sit away um, and so, that that actually gives a more natural sound to the sax anyway it's more like it would sound in the room so for your students i think it's it's probably a better way of doing it with you with you facing away i think if you were yeah. on axis of it it's quite good for getting quite a, quite a good poppy sax sound but it's not really the way that the saxophone sounds in the room no, so it's not as not. useful for yeah. your students so yeah brilliant great thank you no worries cool so we're now talking to my friend hugh lawrence he has a home studio set up um, so how are you approaching these lessons, Hugh? What, what ends have you gone to to improve the audio at your end? Okay, so I've got this microphone that I bought. Um, it's, I'll just turn it so you can see what it is. Um, it's, there we are. It's a Shure MV51. Shure MV51, yeah, great. And it's, uh, it's a fantastic bit of kit. It, it mounts straight onto a microphone stand, or, mm -hmm. it, or you can just use it. It sort of is its own stand as well on a desktop. And that's a, like a kickback thing on it. It's a USB uh, microphone here, yeah? It's essentially a USB microphone, but uh, the, the bonus is it also works with lightning straight from iOS, which is handy. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's class compliant, right, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, so and it, on it, it's got... Um, so I'm actually monitoring my headphones out the back of the mic. Directly, what, yeah. Direct, so uh, this is actually my in and out it's basically functioning as an audio interface and on the on the front of the this thing it's got these five presets so i've got a preset for very loud environments which is great for the drums sure i've i've got flat unprocessed no no compression oh yeah yeah uh slight um slight compression i think for speech this is the i think they say this is for like speech and music okay uh, then the next level up, it's got an it's got a picture of an acoustic guitar. Okay. Um, so I think Great. that's that's kind of for like, basically it's the different volume levels within the room that I'm in. Yeah, and yeah. It, it applies the sort of it's got a compression to it, and it's fantastic bit of kit. It's really good. Can you play me some drums? Yeah, I can. So if I put it on like the setting that you would use for recording a band that they recommend, they for recording a band, and then I I I just have it here. Uh, and then if I play the drums, it, I think it sounds all right. Yeah. Uh, and I can sit here and my voice, I think my voice comes across okay. It does, it comes across perfectly, yeah. This is about, it's about three foot, I'm about three feet away from the microphone. 
Good. And I think the thing that that makes a huge difference in your space as well, Hugh, is the fact that you've got the, the space that you're in is acoustically treated. So we're not getting any flutter echoes or, or, or any standing waves that are causing a problem really so the I'm sound very lucky that... because i've got my my garden studio my soundproof shed yeah um, and it's yeah it's it's a very nice space to have the acoustic treatment makes it makes an enormous difference this setup for me it's it, the, this particular microphone is fantastic for me because i don't have to have tech it's just the mic that's all i need i've just got my my imac uh, which is quite an old imac uh, but it's still coping absolutely fine. And the mic, that, there's nothing else. I don't need to have an interface, a mixer or anything. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's a very simple um, solution to the problem, isn't it? Very simple. Um, and I would say my iMac is actually, I'm I'm hardwired into my router. Yeah, I think that's really important. Cable, yeah. And I think that helps with the connection. So we're going to chat to my friend Noah about how he's got his setup. So... Noah, you're using, you've got a microphone there and you've got your guitar. Yep. So how are you connecting this to you, to your computer? Yeah, so basically I've just got the mic and then that's running straight into the Focusrite Scarlett 6i6. It's just like a two input interface, basically. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, and then I've got my guitar running into a Line 6 Helix, yep. which is then also just running straight into the interface. And then... I'm just using the interface for all my audio, so that's both input and output. Great. Can we hear your guitar? Yeah. Yeah, great. So it's a really nice sort of clear sound from your guitar because it's just coming direct into the computer. So that's a really yeah. good solution, actually, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that you're using a switched mic so you can... You can switch your mic off if you need to. As yeah, well, precisely. Can't you? Yes. If I need to cough or something. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. If you only have a couple of inputs on your sound card, one solution might be if you've got a mixer or something. If you're a gigging musician, you might have a small mixer lying around in the garage or something that you can just plug those inputs that you need into that. So maybe you can use a phone for the backing tracks and you can plug a couple of your instruments in. You can maybe plug some microphones in that are on your instrument and then a small microphone on your voice like this, something like this Lavalia microphone that I'm using. And then you can just input those as those inputs into input one or input one and two on your computer. It's quite a fairly simple way of doing that. I would imagine if you've got any more of an elaborate setup than that, then you, you probably already know what you're doing and don't really need my advice on it. If you do have any questions, I'm happy to help anyone in any way that I can. So please do ask me below and I'll do my best to answer the question. I don't mind doing a bit of research for you as well and see what we can do. Hope everyone's finding the online teaching fun. I'm enjoying my online teaching a lot, actually. I'm, I'm finding new ways to do things, which is always good. And through being forced into doing it in a certain way, it's forcing my teaching to develop in, in other ways, which is good. I was thinking about doing a video about some of the other functions of Zoom, uh, marking up things and sharing windows and various things like that. So if that's something that you think you'd be interested in, please do leave a comment below and let me know and I'll get straight on that. I'll get that done for next week. Another thing that I've found to make a huge difference to the quality of the audio on your video calls is the internet connection that you have. If you're using a fiber connection or business broadband connection at both ends, then the audio quality is much, much higher. I think it's particularly important for tutors to have fiber or business broadband. What you're looking at really is the, the upstream on this. It's not so much the downstream, but the upstream that really counts. So if you're looking for a new internet package, have a look at the numbers for the upstream. Really it wants to be around or above 20 megabits a second for it to be good enough for video streaming. I think that it's also important to think about the acoustics of the room that you're in. So if you're in a room with lots and lots of hard surfaces, having some way of dampening down the sound a little bit will make a difference. You can do this either getting acoustic treatment from companies like GIK, or you can make some panels yourself if you're any good with that. All you need is some frames and some rock wool. You can look up some videos of how to do that. It's fairly straightforward to do. 
Or it could just be a simple solution such as hanging a duvet behind your computer out of the sight of the customer and that'll just take some of the early reflections away, giving a more focused sound to you playing your instrument and you talking and just removing some of those flutter echoes. Great, thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe and like the video. I've got a beginner guitar course that if anybody's interested in, they can learn how to play the guitar from scratch. All of the materials that are on that are completely free. Anyone can use them. So if you're teaching yourself and you're short of materials, please feel free to use my materials. If you have any other materials that you think could be of use to me, please do send me a message. I'm always looking for new materials for my students. So that'd be fantastic. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon.